and welcome back to the March workshop vlog. Now I have been so busy over the past month and I suspect this month's going to be even more busy. So we've got a lot to get going with, so let's crack on. So I didn't make a video for this as it's pretty obvious how I did it, but I just thought I'd show you. So up here we've got my vintage carving gouges, screwdrivers and all that sort of stuff. Down here is my plane rack. You can see my nice restored plane and then just built on this simple frame system. These are offcuts of some sort of pallet wood or something like that. I don't know what they are. So they're not the nicest bits of wood, but they work. And I found this, thought it was rather funny, so I decided to keep it in the workshop. Got a framing square, mallets, tools. Yes, there's quite a few tools missing. They're somewhere around the workshop at the moment. And I will put them back up, but overall I'm really happy with how it looks. And you can see my really nice restored plane there. I'll show you that in a second, but I've got quite a few more planes to now restore. I'm really, really happy with the tool, and I think it will really look good as a backdrop for videos, because this will be where I'm filming most of my videos from, once the workshop's fully sorted. Now if I just pan the camera up a bit, you can see my Union Jack project. If you're interested in seeing the video for that, I'll drop it below. Designer make canvas print up there, and then wood turners blend over here. Now these are all simply canvas prints from Vista Print. I showed them in a workshop vlog, probably back end of August now, and I finally got them up here, and I think they look absolutely awesome. Then up here, we've got the sticker wall. Not many stickers on it yet, but there will be some more. So there's a quick look if you're interested. First of a bit, I cut down out of a little branch. That was a piece of sequoia, I believe. The clock that never tells the right time because I need to change the battery. The workbench, which is just messy, messy. These are old um, drawer fronts. Again, probably something like a nice piece of mahogany or peely or something along those lines. Fairly decent stuff. Some of them have got bits on them, but you can see I've got absolutely tons of it here. Now, it goes back all the way to the back of the wall there and pretty high as well and I reckon I've got about 50 of those there's a box underneath them it doesn't go right down to the workbench but they're all straight so if you're interested in seeing a project from them let me know if you've got any ideas though what I could do with all of these drawer fronts please let me know because I don't really know what to do with them if I'm being totally honest I've got absolutely tons of them and I thought they were far too good to throw in a bin or throw in a skip or whatever so likewise I've got all of those and I've got tons of these mahogany floorboards so I've got a lot of wood here and I need some projects to make with them. So as I'm sure I've told you before, my workshop gets very cold in the winter. So I thought, well, we've just had carpet taken out of one of the rooms because the room's been repainted and the carpet doesn't match it at all now. So it was just some cheap old carpet. It wasn't top of the range carpet or anything. And it was just going to go in a skip or whatever because it wasn't any use for anything. And I thought, hmm, I know what I could do with that. So I've got a big chunk of carpet in the workshop. Now it doesn't cover the whole workshop floor, it covers two thirds of it maybe, a third, I'm not really sure. But it covers my main working area, which is those two workbenches, which are my one, which is um, next to the shelving thing and my vintage workbench. And it also has the bouncer on it. And then this lathe bench here, I'll show you that now, where the carpet goes. So here is one of the offcuts of the carpet here. This is just like a nice floor mat that I can stand on here. As you can see, I can keep my feet on it. The lathe is very messy because I was turning green wood yesterday. Um, and as you can see, absolute tons and tons of green wood shavings. They are so, so nice to work with. So here's one of the things I turned from it. This little green wood thing. It was just practicing with different shapes and things. You can see I've got some tear out, but I'm quite happy with it. Just mucking about really, and then this was one of the not so great ones, just literally mucking about with some green wood. I think it's sycamore to be honest, it feels like sycamore when I turned it and it turns so well. And then we've also got all of the failures here from my Tazza thing. So if you don't know, a Tazza is essentially an Italian type of cup. And so it basically has like a platter on it with some sort of a stand like that. And then onto a little base like that. So this is what I'm planning on doing for the water competition, and I'll show you this now. So you're going to have to use your imagination a bit here, but for example, it would be something like that. So this would be more of a water drop, a raindrop shape, and then you've got this bit at the top. So the way I'm thinking of doing this is by having the top bit, which basically symbolises like a dam of water or a big open body of water. The raindrop, 
water's dripping down and then the bottom bit which would be just like a small bit of wood like um <laughs> trying to find something like this maybe not this thick but so it'd be something like this connected to this like this so it'd be something like along the lines of that but obviously this base would be way thinner however this didn't work it's got a crack in it and i hit it just gently against the workbench to see whether the crack's going to start to open up a bit and it is you might be able to see it there and i could fill it with ca glue but I'm also not hugely happy with the quality of the turning off this. So this will make a nice bit of firewood or a frisbee. I don't know. I might be able to do something with it yet. I haven't decided. But you can kind of get what I'm going at here. It would look something like that. And I think it would look really cool. It's going to hopefully look quite elegant and sort of like an art piece. And I'm also going to try and have this top platter with ripples in it. So the way I'm going to do that is basically by turning lots of bumps. And they should, if it all goes to plan, look really good and create... Bumps in the middle bit, sorry, someone's doing building work as well. Um, so yeah, ripples in the top, raindrop, which goes down onto a bottom bit. Which I think overall should look pretty cool. And I definitely think it will symbolise some water, which is the overall theme of the challenge. So something like this, not this exact one, but I'm going to be turning it out of beach, and I'll show you the beach I've got for that. So all of this beach came from Surrey Timbers, so I've got a beach blank here, and then I've got... Another beach blank here, which has got some nice colours and patterns, and this one here. And I did some colour tests using intrinsic colours, which are these two, and then I also used the Libron concentrated wood dyes. So this would be the top of it. It's going to be quite a thick platter, as you can see. This is going to be the middle bit, like so, and then hopefully that doesn't fall off. And then the base, like that. So you can see the overall forms. This will be a bit smaller, but I think it's going to look really cool. This would be very thin as well, so it's going to look quite elegant, I think. And with the rippling at the bottom, going down into the raindrop, which goes down into the body or the base of the piece. And I think overall, it's just going to look really, really cool. And I'm so excited to turn this. Now, hopefully I won't mess this one up, as this is quite a lot of wood here. We've got a beach platter blank here. We've got a spindle blank. And we've also got another small bowl blank. So all together, I think it will look pretty cool. I'm going to try and stain it because, let me get this out, I did some colour tests here as you can see and I think it looked really cool. Overall I'm thinking the Libron one mixed with the sky blue from Hampshire Sheen look quite nice together. Now they can't really be blended together, they don't like to be blended together particularly. So I'm probably going to have one as a certain colour. The raindrop will probably be a combination of the intrinsic colours. This top bit will probably be that light blue and the base will probably be the lighter blue as well. But yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to turning this. I was going to turn this today, but I just, I simply don't have time. It's 11 o'clock already this morning, and I've got a lot more to do today. I've got to get this video filmed, which will take best part of a couple of hours to edit and film. And then I've got to finish sorting out the workshop. I might try and tidy it up. And I've also got to plan some future projects, reply to a few emails, bits and bobs. I have got something I'm working on in the background, which is sort of like a project, but it's something I can't say about until it all goes ahead. So one other thing I'm working on is a really awesome project which I want to make for myself for my birthday. So this project is going to be a long board and it's something I think I've always wanted to try and make and it's not going to be a hugely challenging project. I mean it's going to be quite big. It's going to be 1.05 meters long and it's going to be 215, 216 um, millimeters across and it's going to be a pintail shaped long board. It's going to be made of Two cherry strips with a sapili strip running through the middle. Nice trucks. I'm thinking of having some jet black trucks on it with gold wheels. I think it's going to look so cool. So black wheels with gold lettering on them. And I'm just so excited for this project. So I'm going to be making this for my birthday as I think it's quite nice to make myself something. And then I can hopefully go out around the roads and things, get some really nice shots of it. And when lockdown eventually ends, I can go and meet up with a few friends and things and maybe do some stuff with that log board to get some really nice videos for it. So a couple of other bits to talk about are going to be a vice and a workbench, the machine workbench and I've got to show you something at the bottom of the garden. I did make a script but I don't think I brought it out with me, which was clever. Um, oh, behind me. So we've got longboard, Tazza, yeah this is called a Tazza by the way, this cup thing. Um, logs, machine workbench, upcoming q and I'm going to have a QA and a video coming out, I think it'll be next weekend. So I started putting out a poll and stuff on Instagram, some Q&A boxes. I didn't get any questions for about a couple of hours and then I put 
I put what kind of length of a video do you want, long or short, and everyone put long, so I said, if you want a long video, I'm going to need more questions, and then all of a sudden I got loads of questions, so I've probably got about 30 odd questions now. Might not get through all of those in a 20 minute video, but we'll see. Flower video, if you haven't seen that, that was what I entered into the February challenge, which is the U YouTube cross channel challenge 2021. I'm turning the Tazza, the water, it's themed in water this year, well this month, um, so I'm going to turn the Tazza. So here is the plane that I restored about two weeks ago now, and I'm absolutely over the moon with how it turned out. It performs beautifully, it planes so much better than it did to start with, and it looks absolutely awesome. I love it, I absolutely love it, I love the polished brass, I love everything about this, I'm so ha so happy with it. So, I've got a lot more planes to restore, I might go and grab one of those in a second, but I've got planes to restore, I've got some really rusty chisels to restore, shelves I've shown you, the carpet I need to show you, so I'll show you that now. So excusing all of the mess on the floor, I have a carpet. Now this carpet was an old one we had, which, I don't know, it's a bit quirky, but it keeps my feet warm. And then you can see I've got this nice grey carpet. I need to glue that bit down there because that's... Sorry, I can't glue this bit down because that's where the um, manhole cover thing is. Not a manhole, it's some sort of access cover. But you can easily access it, so... All you've got to do is roll it from that corner to there, so... It's not too much of a hassle. Um, yeah, shelves and stuff, I've shown you those. But this carpet goes all around the workshop and it comes up to the step, which I absolutely love. So it's finished with slates, this step, and oh, it looks so good against the inside of the house. I'm not going to show you the inside of the house, though, but yeah. Carpet comes out to here, and the edge of the workshop is here. So as you can see, it covers most of it. This is all the builder's stuff, but got a whiteboard up here, finally. One of the coolest things to have in the workshop. So if you're interested in seeing everything we've got on there, there we go. Rather a lot to do in there. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> rather a lot to do. Um, I've got some vintage car headlamps I want to put onto this kitchen area of the workshop, so I'll show you that. But yeah, carpet's going all around the workshop up to here, which is perfect because then all the sawdust doesn't collect all on the carpet bit here, apart from that little scrap, which works perfectly as a little foot bit. Got some more off cuts. That this is a new carpet that was replacing it. Um, so this carpet scraps I'm going to keep because I think they'll be quite useful as some underlaying stuff for the machinery workbench here. So my dust extractor when Axminster finally decide to deliver it. I ordered it in December. April it's now gonna come, so getting a bit annoyed with that to be honest. I might cancel the order if they don't hurry up. Um yeah machine workbench going from there to about that saw there. It's gonna be for all of my machinery so uh bench grinder sanders scroll saw if I ever get one all of those kind of things. The mitre saw will probably go behind this shelf or it might go over there. I haven't decided yet. I'm not sure if I showed this before, but this is just my finishing cabinet. Nothing particularly exciting. My wood turner's blend up there. If you're interested in purchasing any wood turner's blend, I'll drop a link down below. But yep, yeah, that's just simply my thing up there. I built this wood rack. Yes, I know it's not resting on that one. That's because they're having to do something with the electrics at the moment, because we've got an outside light that's being wired in, but this is absolutely awesome, this little um, rack thing here. And working here in a day, oh, this bit's just great because it keeps my feet nice and warm and it's so much better for my feet. Bandsaw, I've had the cable extended. Um, the cable was like a metre long, um, not even that, three quarters of a metre. Um, so I got the builder just to wire up a new one um, for me. So yep, we got, and yes, I had it in orange, yes, I decided I wanted orange cable to match it. Um, <laughs> say what you wish about that, but had that wired up. I probably need to get a new drive belt for the bandsaw because it's getting a little bit perished and could probably do the new one. So I'm gonna order that in a couple of weeks or a couple of days. But yeah, bandsaw cable has been extended to three meters, which is a lot better. Well, about 2.8 now. Um, yeah, and then up here, I'm gonna tile this backsplash here with these vinyl tiles we had left over. Um, we've got loads of them, so. Gonna run them along here, have a little backsplash and a kitchen area all up here. If you've got any ideas on how I could turn this into a really nice kitchen thing up here, so for a kettle and a toaster, along this top bit here where it says cables, I'm gonna have it above there, some shelving, racking or whatever, let me know and drop it down in the comments below. And I'm gonna build a little cabinet for here as well. So if you've got any ideas for the kitchen, drop them down below. So another project I want to work on is this record number three vice. Now it's a bit too heavy. To try and swing about to show you, but 
I've got a record number for Vice there and I want to restore that and I'm not going to restore it blue so if I tilt the camera down you might be able to see it there we go so yeah I've got this record number for Vice here and I want to restore this now I'm going to paint it black and shiny silver for the other parts and I think it should just really look nice and fit the workbench that I'm going to be building for it now I want a small sort of I guess outfeed table for the band so where I can plonk material on or whatever but I kind of want it to be able to be used for a bit more than just plonk the material on it so I'm going to have this massive vice on it I've got a beautiful bit of oak countertop to make it out of um, the oak countertop looks like well it's the same stuff that sinks built out of it's this stuff I've got loads and loads of it I've got a huge slab of it um, big enough it's probably about a metre and a bit by 50 odd centimetres. So yeah, I think it's a good sized workbench. Plonk the vice on it and I can have my tools on it. So it's more a general purpose workbench, but I want to have it mobile so I can swing it around the workbench. And that's going to be if I have a big glue up, I can put it on there. And you might argue the vice would get in the way, but I don't think it will because I want a vice on it. I want it to be able to be used with a big heavy duty vice on it. So the oak is about 42 mil thick, something like that. So it's plenty thick to put a big chunky vice on like this. And this vice was on a metal workbench and the vice is absolutely lovely. So I really want to put it on a nice looking workbench. And I think if I have it on that um, oak countertop, I think it will really set it off. And it's going to be painted hammerite black and shiny metal. So I'm going to polish all the metal on it, make it absolutely shine. And I just think it's going to look really awesome to be honest um it might not be to some people's taste i'm gonna do a video restoration of restoring that vice because it's pretty rusty and the blue paint could do with a bit of clean as well so i'm gonna paint it black shiny metal plonk it on an oak countertop and i, I just think it's gonna be awesome and yeah it'll be used for things like a bit of metal working i want to get into doing a bit more copper and pewter casting and things like that pewter casting is something that i'm definitely gonna be doing a lot more of especially for wood turning um so that workbench will probably be able to be used for things like that as well so it's going to be a bit more of a heavy duty workbench and it won't be huge it's going to be a small workbench if i'm being honest but it's going to be on wheels so it'd be quite useful if i want to ever do something outside if it's a really nice day i can just wheel it outside go to the back of the garden whatever like that um and i just think it's going to be quite cool quite nice to have a little bit of oak countertop and it looks cool it's solid oak laminated obviously but i think it'll look awesome um a wood store yeah I just need to organise the wood, to be honest, into a store. I really want to hit a 1,000 subs by the end of the year, and I know that's a big target, but I originally said June. I'm not sure if we can get there by June. If you think we can get there, then share the video, share my channel, help me reach that goal. It would really make mean the world to me, I guess. Um, I spent a long time producing all these videos, editing, making the projects videos and things like that. It takes a lot of time, and I really do want to reach a 1,000 subs. It's a big milestone for me and somewhere I would really like to reach. Um, Ebonized bowl, yep, yeah, I want to do some ebonizing, simple as that. Um, cup, I turned a, I called it the slush, slushy cup, I think, because um, it looked like a slushy. Um, I turned that as my second ever piece on the lathe, second ever bowl or, so to speak, faceplate work. Um, I want to redo that, I guess, exactly like that, but I want to do it bigger and better. Um, now that I know more what I'm doing, um, it's basically going to be an improved version of the slushy cup. It will be the same colours probably make it out of the same wood i'll probably do it out of poplar as well because i made the first nut poplar it would make sense um well so, oh yeah old tools now i've got this lovely old number four plane and it camera really doesn't show you how bad it is but it is rusty it is really really rusty i'll put a photo over this so you can see what it's like but it's rusty it's terribly rusty i mean if you look at that you can see the amount of pitting and surface rust but it's a number four plane. I don't have a number four plane. There's no manufacturer's name on it. I'm led to believe it's a Stanley. Um, but uh, I don't know if you know, then let me know. But um, yeah, I love plane restorations. They take blooming ages, but they look awesome. This one, the handles are all intact. It is completely rusty. It was found in a drawer where I got all those vintage mahogany boards from. And we couldn't get the drawer apart, so I had to crowbar it off. Um, smash the drawers apart to get all the wood off of it and get tools out of it. I found... Absolute tons of vintage wood turning chisels, um, vintage chisels, again all super rusty, ironically this is probably one of the best condition chisels, um, so you can guess what the others are going to look like. There's also two of those drill, I think they're called drill braces, the old drills where you have a big, 
I can't get it out because it's buried under a load of stuff, but I've got a vintage drill brace. Um, I'll try and get it out. That was a little easier than I thought. I've got one here, and I've got another one here. Now, I've never used one of these before, but I love them. I think they look absolutely awesome, and oh, I've got nowhere to put anything. Um, I want to have one of these on a tool wall. I just think they look so cool. They're just an awesome bit of old old woodworking and yeah I know you'll use them something like that is it something like that I don't know um I don't really use these but it's also got this ratchet function this one's a bit more basic but they're both great I think they'll make really nice little things um no idea on the age or manufacturer's names doesn't seem to be anything on them they're old I can tell you that um I would guess that they've got to be at least 50 years old, I would suggest, based on where they were and the drawer conditions. And then I've also got um, another little gem I found. Stanley block plane. If I can get it out of the box. There you go. I've already got a block plane, but this is a nice small one. Got some plastic on it. Not to my taste particularly. Um, is it plastic? No, it's metal, which just looks plasticky. It's quite cool. Um, I prefer my one. I've got my Spear and Jackson one, but I think this is cool nonetheless. It's got some really bad rusting here. Um, yeah, it's cool though. Well, thank you very much for watching this workshop vlog. I really hope you've enjoyed it and hope you enjoy seeing what's coming up in future videos. Next week will be the Q&A video. Week after that will be the turning the Tazza thing for the YouTube cross channel challenge 2021. And that will be in the theme of water and then I think that'll probably be it for March. We might get one more video out. We'll see. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and don't forget to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.